Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. I have an organization problem. My garage is a disaster zone where tools find homes wherever there's horizontal real estate. My drills and drivers are especially bad in this regard, so I decided to give them a hanging home on my workbench. I had a shape sketched out in a notebook before I began, which I think is the easiest way to get ideas down. From there, it was just a matter of transferring my design into the Carbide Create workspace. To do this, I'll be using a few Boolean operations to cobble together the shape of my drill holders. But before we start, we need to do a little preliminary setup. First, we need to tell Carbide Create that our canvas needs to be at least 4 inches square, that our material is 3 quarters of an inch thick, here I'm adding a little margin just to be safe because MDF is never exactly 0.750 inches, that our retract height should be only a few millimeters high so as not to waste time plunging, oh, and that we should be using inches because that's just how my brain works. You can also change your grid spacing to make laying out your shapes easier. I like using quarter inch or half inch increments. Future Winston here, if you're going to zero off your wasteboard, don't forget to set your zero reference to the bottom of the stock. Otherwise, your shape oko will punch a hole straight through your material. Alright, the first real step is to create a circle that'll be the outer diameter of my drill holder. Next, I'll draw in a rectangle that represents the cutout at the bottom. And then I'll draw in the hollow area where my tools will sit. This needs to be concentric to my first circle and 2.75 inches in diameter. Using the boolean subtract function, I'll cut the rectangle out of my outer circle, creating one combined profile. Do another boolean subtract, removing the inner circle from the combined shape from the previous step, and we have an open C shape. Now, I'm going to need to be able to attach this to a mounting plate so I can easily attach these to my bench, so I'm going to add a flat on top of my C shape. I'll draw a rectangle, combine these profiles together, and end up with something that looks remarkably like my intended design. Now, to use my material more efficiently, I'll also copy my drill holder and rotate it so I can partially nest the shapes. Now, toolpath time. I'll select both my shapes and apply a contour toolpath to them. I'm using an 8th inch end mill, so I'll use the 102 cutters presets, but I'm also going to override the stock cutting parameters since I know we can afford to go way faster on the shape Oko. I also need to make sure we're cutting through the full depth of the material and we're cutting on the outside of the part. And that's about it. I'll be using an onion skin and double-sided tape, so there's no need to use tabs. I'll save my G-code and head to the garage. Here I installed an 8th inch end mill with enough stick out to get through my MDF, then I set my zero height at the wasteboard using my touch probe and adjusted it by 0.3mm so I don't cut through my double sided tape. Now I do this by messing with the Z offset. Essentially what I'm telling the CNC when I reduce this value is, hey, you're closer to the bottom of the part than you thought, cut a little higher up. Alternately, you could stick a few sheets of paper underneath your touch probe or skip the touch probe entirely. There's more than one way to zero a CNC. With everything set up, I hit start. I waited a couple minutes for my mounts to get cut out, then I made another pair. Then I glued and screwed these to some plywood slats and screwed the drill holders into my workbench. Pro tip, if you're going to screw into the side of MDF, you should clamp the faces because that screw will try and split the MDF. This was a conceptually simple project to execute with a bunch of room for customization. For example, you could actually combine multiple frames together and then cut them out at the same time. These would actually be stronger than my individual C mounts and faster to scale up since multiples can be made with one toolpath, but I'll leave those permutations for you to explore. Good luck and have fun machining folks.